Pokemon Go now has 100 million downloads and more active users than Twitter or Facebook. And not surprisingly, the augmented reality game has taken gaming and marketing by storm. Pokemon Go has definitely captured the world and the Philippines is no exception. How did Pokemon Go open up new customer experiences and new marketing channels? And how can your business leverage on this app to catch them all consumers? Good evening, I'm Rod Depomoceno and this is Insight. With us, Mitch Dumlao, General Manager of Glorieta Ayala Malls, and Bubbly Encarnacion, Engagement Strategist, ONM Philippines. Bubbly, Mitch, welcome to the show. Thank All you. right, Pokemon Go. It's 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 a phenomenon to say the least. No? Uh, can you in, in, can you encapsulate this this uh, this phenomenon? What what is the reason behind? Uh, this this huge huge hit. I think really with Pokemon Go, it's the intersection of how a pop culture icon like Pokemon, which has existed for three decades, mm -hmm. was able to become relevant again to a new generation of players through mm -hmm. augmented reality. So it's a way really of how AR or augmented reality has been adapted by the mass. Mm -hmm. Because for a while, everyone was trying to figure out what AR was or yes. how to mm -hmm. really how use, to use it, it, right? And, and now it, there seems to be a concrete. Uh, example or application of, of, of AR. Now, uh, Mitch, at what age group uh, does this particular game uh, attract? Or does it cut across, uh, does it transcend age and, and gender? It cuts across a wide uh, mm -hmm. group, no? Uh, I think Pokemon yeah. started somewhere in the late 1990s. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, so, right. um, I would say that the age group where it was popular would start with the early people who are in their early 40s, mm -hmm. right. um, down to the millennials now. So, did it start with them? Did it start with those, uh, I guess, the early 40s, perhaps mid-30s uh, crowd? With any technological advancement, I believe that it really begins with the early adapters. So mm. that's probably the, the younger yeah. set, so the millennials. And then, mm. well, for instance, um, with what I've seen, um, the older people are then able to, to adapt to it easily yeah. through word of mouth. You're talking about familiarity of Pokemon, right. but uh, uh, at the same time, uh, we're always looking for kind of a new trend. Right. Uh, this, this kind of defies that, uh, that, that, that adage, you know. Why do you think it clicked among the kids, for example? Why is it working for, for them, considering it's an old, uh, I guess, character? Or, okay, or I, think, I think it's because it's technology-based, which mm -hmm. is something that the kids are into now. Mm -hmm. And so um, they merge the, the, the virtual world with what is actual, right. if, mm -hmm. you, if you're familiar with the gameplay. And I think that's the one that really appeals to these kids, mm -hmm. uh, even though uh, this Pokemon started way, way back. But this one particularly hit home. We, we, we see a lot of people now going, yeah. going about their phones. So why do you think that it, it's also impacted on Filipinos, probably? I think um, that with, uh, with uh, how Pokemon Go really was, ad was embraced by Filipinos, it's because of the grassroots nature of the game mm -hmm. that you really are encouraged with your community of people. And being Filipino and being very social, um, mm -hmm. we are dependent on familial ties and the like. So it's really very interesting how people were able to encourage their friends and also their family members to join in. I've seen people talk to their older parents, um, a 13-year-old and a, and a 40-year-old mother walking together, playing Pokemon Go together. It's also a bonding experience for the mm. whole family. Okay, so it kind of it connects yes. the, the generation. Yes. One is based on technology, the other one is based on the familiarity. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And at, at the same time, I mm. think that us Filipinos, we, do our, we are very experimental when it comes yeah. to social, social media mm. and technology. So we want to adapt what's going on, let's say, in the U.S. or yeah. in mm -hmm. Australia. I think the first one that kind of benefited from, you, uh, from it is, is kind of the lo location-based uh, brands or mm -hmm. establishments, such as Ayala Malls, for example, mm -hmm. uh, where, where people would converge. You know? How this particular game works well for Ayala Malls? Well, I think, uh, first of all, uh, what we like about this concept of po Pokemon Go is that it's an entertainment factor. Right. Mm -hmm. um, for us in the Ayala Malls, um, we do have dining and we do have shopping, but we always harp on the experience mm -hmm. and the entertainment part, mm -hmm. uh, which Pokemon Go has brought to the malls. Mm -hmm. um, there's also that interaction that we have with the children. And another thing is that it, it actually um, improves the circulation within the mall because mm -hmm. yeah. 
people would really try to go to each and every Pokestop. Mm. Um, and since they're there, they might as well the yeah. <laughs> eat a little bit or, or shop a little bit, right? Yeah. Yes. Is that what yes, they do? Yes, yes. Okay. Of course, uh, incremental sales for mm. our merchants as well. Mm. Now, does this reflect the uh, bubbly onset of this mobile first generation? Is this, is this going to be a trend or is this a one-off, do you think? Being mobile first, really, you see, we need to see mobile as the glue between offline and, on, and the online world. Mm. So it really allows us to connect both realities. Um, you see people doing Snapchat, um, doing Facebook, etc., connecting through their mobile phones. But it's mm. really something that you can bring around, technology in your pocket. So with that, I don't think it's just a one-off today. Mm -hmm. I think it's something that brands should be watching out for. And brands need to see how they can build on it in the future. Okay. But you mentioned earlier that... Um, and interestingly, that there was a game similar, yes. uh, which is Ingress, right? Ingress, yes. Uh, and this used, used GPS technology, it used yeah. networking, mm -hmm. um, it, 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 it was social. Um, it had similar features. How come that didn't explode and this one exploded? Are you saying that it's, it's, it's really just because of the, the addition of the, a familiar franchise? Right. There's an, ac there's an actual study. Mm -hmm. um, published in the States that spoke about the fact that in innovation, it's 25% familiarity and 70 and the 75% of mm -hmm. having something new. Mm -hmm. So as humans, we really need to have a framework or a pattern of seeing things mm -hmm. that are familiar to us. But at the same time, we want to experience new things. So I think with Pokemon Go, which was actually built on the bones of Ingress, that's what happened. It was a new experience. It was the brand of Pokemon that became an experience for everyone. All right, we'll take a look at various strategies that marketers can use to capitalize on Pokemon Go's popularity. That's next when Insight returns. We'll be right back. We'll go away. Back with us in Insight, we're with Mitch Dumlao of Ayala Malls and Bubbly Encarnacion of ONM. All right, how can businesses capitalize on uh, on Pokemon Go? I'll, I'll start with you, Bubbly. Um, really, it's about finding the convergence between the brand and also at the same time Pokemon mm. Go. So, for instance, trend jacking can be done. That's what Lay Bear, which is a waxing salon, has done with uh, the recent Facebook ad mm -hmm. um, with the Bulbasaur. Anyway. Yeah, what, what did they do specifically? <laughs> they um, they just said that. Um, Para get rid of Bulbasaur, go to Labear. So it's a pun on Balbas mm -hmm. and also the Bulbasaur Pokemon. Bulbasaur, yeah. Yes. Oh. And of, um, other brands like beverage brands have actually leveraged on Pokemon Go. In the States, there's a brand of yogurt. It's called Stony Field. And what they've done is uh, they geo-targeted different Pokestops. Mm -hmm. And then they positioned their ads to say that, hey, Pokemon Go trainers, if you need to refresh, uh, take this yogurt drink to refresh while you're doing mm -hmm. your hunting. Okay, so now, does that involve a little bit of licensing? Can, can, can advertisers actually use mm -hmm. uh, the logo, for example, or, or, or the, uh, the font of Pokemon Go? And, and, for and specifically for Stony Field, uh, they actually went around the licensing issues through that. So they, 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 just, they, just, they just utilized the Pokestops. Mm -hmm. So uh, for a loca uh, location-based uh, business like Ayala Malls, uh, how are you uh, specifically leveraging on this and what specific uh, things have you done? I think this is a very good opportunity to us, for us actually to push our own products and services. Mm -hmm. So for example, what we did during the first, mm -hmm. rather the second wave of the Pokemon mm -hmm. Go um, phenomenon, we created a Pokemon lounge, mm -hmm. uh, meaning people can just gather there. And, and you, again, when you, when you say that, when you, when you promote that, you say this is a Pokemon lounge, you, you, can, you can say those words? Um, we can't say Pokemon Lounge, yeah. but yeah. maybe just a lounge okay. for, for that. Um, how do you get around that? How do you, how do you tell people it's a Pokemon lo Lounge without, without saying, saying it's, it's a, a Pokemon, a Pokemon Lounge? lounge? Uh, we don't use the Pokemon logo. Okay. I mean, there's a certain text to it. Yes. So we just use the normal the, that's text. That's a word, actual yes. text. Okay, okay, all right. And we don't claim, That's fine. Yeah. We don't okay. claim ownership. We just say that, hey, there's a Pokemon stop here, which is, I think, legal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and just say we have a lounge there. All right. Okay, so what we did... So you can say that. I mean, uh, for, there's no licensing issue when you... Uh, or perhaps... No, especially uh, if it's done uh, through social issues. media. Okay. Because it, right. be, it can come out as a comment to mm -hmm. your postings on social media. Ah, okay. Ah, so you can... You can of course, it's, it's in your Facebook page. Or so to some extent, you're just saying, you're, you're saying it. Yes. Without, uh, without necessarily having a formal tie-up 
with it. Yes. Right. Yes. And, uh, and and how have you communicated this through through social media? Do you have lure parties as well? We do have lure parties. We've been having lure parties, and mm -hmm. most of it is really communicated through um, our media channels like Instagram, mm -hmm. Facebook, and Twitter. Now, has there been a positive impact in terms of perhaps the the image of Ayala Mall? Has there been increase in in sales, for example, have the, you seen, have you seen the, that, that impact? There have been increases in all of our indices. So uh -huh. foot traffic, uh -huh. yes. Sales, yes, especially if you're near a Pokestop. And in our social media, we can see like 200% increase in the engagement when this happened. Um, we got 173,000 positive responses wow. because of this. I think they're, they're still not allowing it now, no? where yes. you have in-game in ads. Ads. No. Uh, th that's still not allowed, Bobby, right? Is that confirmed? Do um, you think that anytime soon the publishers will allow uh, such, uh, such a uh, intrusion? Looking at the industry of um, mobile gaming, in-game ads are, of course, the norm. Mm -hmm. But the publishers or the creators of um, Pokemon Go really need to take into consideration how they want to design the user experience. Mm -hmm. A lot of the gamers don't really want to have intrusive ads. Right. So it's for me, um, and I, I believe this is what um, I would do if I, if I were the strategist mm -hmm. of the brand, it's really about finding a way to converge or find the point of convergence for the brand and for Pokemon Go mm -hmm. to see the commonality and how the brand could enhance the user experience mm -hmm. of the player. So for instance, there were tech brands um, like um, Power Map, I believe, that they had uh, ads on Facebook talking about uh, their power banks that it would allow you to go hunting for Pokemon for a longer time because mm. it eats up your battery, the augmented reality right. um, uh. functionality of it. So that's an interesting way of going around. Mm. Uh, now, do you think that anytime soon, uh, I, I know, uh, f for instance, uh, for your location-based marketing, uh, there's, there's still no way to, for, for example, having your your tenants uh, or your locators there in Ayala Malls mm -hmm. to yeah, go inside the game itself. Yes. Uh, but and uh, is this something though that uh, that you think that will eventually happen? And if so, uh, would Ayala Malls be considering that to to further enhance uh, their experience uh, in their specific uh, location in, in Ayala Malls? Mm -hmm. It's something that we would be open and interested to explore with um, because, mm. we, again, we see the potential of this new mm. marketing tool mm. in order to promote our malls. Mm -hmm. Perhaps you can explain also how, mm. how locations yeah. or perhaps malls or places can apply to be uh, Pokemon Go stops. Yeah. It's really going through Niantic and through the Ingress game. So currently, right. the Pokestops that, are, that have been identified there yeah. uh, were really via the Ingress yes, game. Yeah. So um, there's a site that you could go to through Niantic and then you could try applying. But right now, there are um, press releases that they're not allowing it. Yeah. But for instance, in Japan... Why did they suspend that? Do you, do you have an idea? Mm, because the, no, they I, were just... I believe um, that with... when, they, when they launched it, no additional Pokestops were allowed to to be okay. approved yet All right. for, for the first mm -hmm. part of it, for the first year. Mm -hmm. um, in McDonald's, Japan, they're actually the first brand to partner directly with Niantic. So that was really a clear mm -hmm. brand partnership. And they've seen an increase in sales more than 20% um, this July compared to previous times. And what they've done is through sponsored locations. So um, Niantic and McDonald's, Japan, were able to identify Pokestops and Pokegyms in different McDonald's branches. And then... Uh, McDonald's also used... Uh, but they were already in the system, these, these yes, Pokestops. Yes, they were already right? in the yeah. system. And then they, at the same time, um, they were allowed to use the Pokemon characters to mm -hmm. be the giveaways for the Happy Meal toys. Mm -hmm. So that's really a very nice convergence of the two brands. But this one had uh, kind of a licensing aspect to yes, it as well. Yes, they right? really worked with Niantic on this one. Okay, Niantic is the the, is the, the developer of the developer. Pokemon Go. All right, yeah. so it wasn't the original publisher of Pokemon. I, I guess they just licensed. No, they, they just worked licensed. with Nintendo. Nintendo. Yeah. Nintendo yeah. was the owner of the Pokemon. Pokemon yeah. uh, franchise. franchise, so it's not them, it's actually this developer. Excellent. All right. Will Pokemon Go's popularity last? Will this game create the marketing strategy of the future? Let's find out when Insight returns. We'll be right back. Go away. Welcome back to Insight with us, Bobby Encarnacion of ONM and Mitch Dumlao of Ayala Malls. All right. Should every brand 
leverage on the Pokemon Go? Is it for for all brands or it's only for, for specific brands? From a communication strategist's point of view, it's really finding the convergence between the brand and Pokemon Go. Or leverage a, if it doesn't fit. It, if it doesn't fit, don't force it. Yeah. So if the shoe doesn't fit, don't force it. So yeah. no, the answer yeah. would be no. The answer would be go. I mean, uh, there will be certain establishments and certain industries and product categories right. where you wouldn't you wouldn't see the, the connection. Right. And then more importantly, it's really about the consumer. Is your mm -hmm. consumer playing Pokemon Go in the first place? Mm -hmm. Maybe not. So if that's the case, then don't force your brand to to use the the game just because you, you want to be trendy or mm -hmm. cool. Now for Ayalamos, is this something that you uh, Try to continue on until you maximize it and you know really squeeze out every possible um, marketing opportunity from it. Or it's you think that this this particular craze has reached its uh, peak and it's time to move on to the, and see what the next one is. I think that um, there is still room to maximize uh, the synergy between this game and the Ayala yeah. Malls. No, yeah. so. Every weekend, we continue with our gimmicks, um, mm -hmm. with our different events that would mm -hmm. promote the Pokemon Go. So I think there's still... There's still but since difference. you don't have an exclusivity for it, I mean, other malls, yeah. other mall, mall uh, uh, brands mm -hmm. can leverage in it, right? Yes. I mean, they can, right? Yes. So it really show. now boils down to how creative mm -hmm. you can actually um, work with uh, the How you Pokemon. execute or implement yes. uh, kind of leveraging in, on the whole thing. Now, in the case of... Uh, Pokemon Go. Do you think that um, you think it might be a smart idea for companies to to think hmm, maybe we should create an, our own app mm -hmm. rather than leveraging on an app that's existing and everyone seems seems to be latching on. Mm -hmm. so, oh, yeah, sorry. Pokemon Go just goes to show how brands have evolved over time to brands as experience and brands as service. Mm -hmm. So if you're a brand, you'll be able to evolve your your offering from just products or services to something that people can experience, mm -hmm. then go develop an app, go develop a website, go mm -hmm. develop an experience and engagement yeah. plan for them. Mm -hmm. At the same time, um, we also see that brands have become brands of service. So it, this means that people get a utility out of the brand, how airlines have developed, etc. Mm -hmm. So it's really about finding a way to evolve your brand mm -hmm. um, and using technology to use that, to mm -hmm. do that. So that can be through augmented reality or even through applications. Yeah. Uh, we've, Mitch? Yep, we've actually um, created our apps already, uh, mm -hmm. even before Pokemon, but these are more on the info app, like our right. e-portal. Mm -hmm. So you go to the portal and everything about our 22 malls is there. Mm -hmm. From okay. the promos down to the number of stores. Mm -hmm. So for us, I guess what is key is how to mm -hmm. evolve this, just like Pokemon Go, to make it more engaging and interactive. Yeah. Um, so it's not, more, not just providing information about the malls, it's actually yeah. get them mm -hmm. To do some kind of action. Yes, right? that's in the pipeline, but for yeah. now it's more information. I think everyone agrees it's a craze, and I think at some point, almost all, um, I guess, games or fads uh, that happen or, or something that became so popular, at some point uh, they would reach a certain peak and, and yep. slowly die away. Do you think that this will last for a long time, Mitch? It would really depend on the creators. Mm -hmm. uh, they need to constantly tweak and introduce new things into the game. Mm -hmm. So like now, we're still at that sweet spot where everyone is just trying it. Uh, but in the next few weeks, maybe they need to mm -hmm. do something uh, unique again or something quirky to keep yeah. or to sustain that um, interest in mm -hmm. their game. Uh, Bubbly? Globally, yeah. actually, we've seen a softening in terms of the usage of the app. Mm -hmm. But what's interesting is the fact that Niantic has plans for it. Uh, they said that the current uh, functionalities of the application are just at the 10% of what they plan to feature. They are planning to look into developing additional characters, the legendary Pokemons, um, fixing the functionalities of the gym, so maybe someday we'll be able to um, play against another person directly. Or um, they're actually going to release the body Pokemon walk, the walking body Pokemon. So you'll be able to walk, for instance, with Pikachu along with their avatar. Mm. So that's an interesting new development. So it's really, as Mitch said, it's really what they plan to do with the game. If they continue to innovate at the same time, while people are still interested about it, then the the game will still live on. And I guess it's really. Um, interesting how communities have been built around the game. So mm -hmm. people are actually supporters of it. They have that's made... the essence there. Yes, right? I mean exactly. it's, it's the community that you were talking about. Right. Where all of you are. You mentioned you attended one of those lure parties, yes. and it kind of uh, it had a community feel. Yes, I think that's that's the, that's the key there. Yeah. Now, do you think this will pave the way for marketing strategies uh, that focus on mobile uh, GPS loca location driven experiences? Do you think that 
that's going to be the case moving forward. Well, personally, I think that this is just that the Pokemon Go is a tip of the iceberg. Yeah. It has opened uh -oh. so many yeah. options, especially for GPS. More possibilities, no? For yeah. GPS. Uh, yeah. Because now people, people realize, oh, this is what augmented reality is. Yes, yes. Exactly. Uh, Because for a while, you were saying, okay, augmented reality, okay, fine. Everyone was talking about AR, but mm -hmm. no one could could actually kind of hit that uh, nail on the head. Yeah. Do you think there'll be more AR-based uh, marketing um, gimmicks in the future? Uh, or do you think that this will plateau, people will get kind of tired with it, and let's move on to the next one? Now that people have an understanding of what mm. augmented reality is and how it works, it would be easier for mm. brands to introduce interesting aspects for them. But again, mm. it's really about the utility, what mm. use do they get out of it, and what is the experience for the consumer. Um, mm. In the States, there are actually media brands um, that are using augmented reality to promote their shows. Mm -hmm. So they create uh, posters that allow you to experience um, monsters while you're on the street, etc. Mm. So things like that, people in the Philippines are very open to adapting those innovations. Mm, okay. Do you, do you uh, however, go through instances where we have to deal with the negative side of mm. uh, Pokemon Go? Because there, there have been instances, and we saw it in the news, yeah. uh, where, where so someone crashed his car yeah. into a house in a, in a <clears throat> private area because he was playing Pokemon Go. Uh, w one woman was uh, found in a tree. Mm. <laughs> Looking for do you, do, you, do you get that uh, do you, are there are there people who may not be uh, I guess too fond with this whole idea of of Ayala being affiliated with this game? I think I can see the risks involved as you mm. mentioned. No? Mm. Um, but um, I guess for us it's really controlling uh, mm. how they play the game and in in mm. what venue mm -hmm. so that we avoid these kinds of um, incidents. Mishaps. All right. Yeah. <laughs> All right. That's fantastic. Well, this is an exciting time for us. Thank you very much, Mitch Dimlao. And thank you very much, Bubble International of ONM. Thank you so much for joining us the show. This is Insight, the program that tackles the latest developments in the dynamic world of marketing. I'm Rod Dipomoseno. See you again next week. Good night.